Hello friends, how are we doing? Today we have, I think, one of the biggest book hauls I've ever done, if not the biggest book haul, because it's kind of gone out of control. I usually do book hauls, I think when I have over 20, 20 to 30 books. I think I have over 40 books that I've bought or have been sent to me from since my birthday. I think my last book haul was at the end of January and my birthday, but we have those. And then in the past week, I have been absolutely bowled over, blown away, <laughs> left speechless by people's generosity because, give me one moment, I have received all these parcels. <laughs> I'm absolutely shell-shocked. I'm absolutely blown away. You know, I'm gonna talk about it more. It's all gonna be pretty much contained in this weekend's vlog, but life has been rough. It's been beyond rough. And I think most of these are probably for my patrons who I've been speaking to a little bit more about it. And they're just kindness and generosity. I mean, some of this might be from you guys who noticed that I was gone for two weeks, which wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the plan, but it just happened. You know, I'm absolutely blown away. So this is also gonna be a really big unboxing as well. So I think we're gonna start with the unboxing and then we'll get into all the other books that I have gotten my hands on over the past, basically half a year, really. So it is a big book haul, but I have been accumulating these for quite some time. So I am so, I'm so I can't tell you how excited I am to open all these these gifts. I, I can't believe people's kindness, generosity, thoughtfulness of thinking of me. Um, yeah, like I said, it'll all be in this weekend's vlog if I manage to get the vlog out this weekend, which I will. <laughs> this vlog I've been working on for like three weeks. I've been working on this for five weeks. But before we get into the video and get into opening the gifts that people have sent me, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is what I'm going to be using to read all of these books, and that is My Serious Light by Serious Readers. You guys know I love My Serious Light. I use it every every single day. Even in the summer, I think because of how my bed is positioned, I need that reading light. I'm not, I haven't got any natural light behind the book. And now I just can't, I can't read the light. When I have to read it out if I'm like on holiday or whatever, like it's still, I'm like, where is my serious light? <laughs> if you don't know, the serious light is this reading light, which has daylight wavelength technology. So it replicates the daylight spectrum that we get from the sun as closely as possible. A lot of lights that we use are like blue light or orange light and in ways that aren't natural to our eyes. Whereas this feels like, oh, it feels like nothing. Like it feels like a breath of fresh air. Like I have no opposition in in my eye, <laughs> in my eye to reading at all. I absolutely love it. I used to get a lot of eye strain in reading, particularly when I lived at uni and we had quite like a dark, it was like a cozy vibe apartment. But it meant I got a lot of eye strain. And the thing with this is it still feels cozy in the evening. It still feels warm and gentle and like cozy because I like a cozy vibe. You know, I like lamps. I like quite a dimly lit room, but that's not great for reading. Whereas this light, it still has a cozy vibe, but oh my God, does it make reading fun. So I have a code for you guys, which is MWB24, and that will get you a hundred pounds off a high definition light plus free UK delivery. If you're international, they can deliver to you. They can for any kind of plug that you need. So if you need an EU plug, a US plug, they can fit that onto the light, but this code gives free UK delivery. And I cannot recommend it enough. It is an investment, but I think it's one of the greatest reading investments you can ever make. Listen, we buy a lot of books. How about buying a reading light that makes <laughs> that makes reading better? So I'll leave my link down below in the description and the pinned comment. You guys should definitely go check this out. I genuinely love it so much. Like I'm not, this ain't like <laughs> a sponsorship. Sometimes with sponsorships, I think when you watch, even when I watch YouTubers, you go like, okay girl, <laughs> okay girl. But I use it every day. I use it every single day. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So I will leave it down below. You should definitely go check it out. Okay, let's get into the unboxing. It's also like the first day this year that's been hot. I feel like, well, no, I've had a few other hot days, but it's the first maybe day I've been filming. I'm like, I'm gonna have to go take breaks to <laughs> cool down somewhere. Anyways, let's get into opening these bags. <laughs> First one. Oh my god, this feels like Christmas. I can't tell you how happy this makes me. Hopefully there'll be notes with a lot of them. <gasps> First we've got the memory police. I've heard so many good things about this. Who is this one from? <laughs> That's quite dramatic. There's the order summary note, but there's not a note note. So whoever got this to me, please let me know. But we have got the memory police by Yoko Ogawa. This is like a dystopian. What is this one with the words? Go away. I think this is where like things get forgotten. So like birds can 
do they write the words down? I can't remember, I think it is. Like words get forgotten, things get forgotten. So like if you forgot birds, birds are gone. Like they've, they've forgotten what birds are. You've got what all perfume or like, I don't know, omelettes. <laughs> I'm just thinking that because Tom's just made an omelette downstairs. <laughs> they disappear. And it's been one I've been interested in reading so many times. It was shortlisted for the 2020 International Booker Prize. And I've heard a lot of good things about it. I've heard it compared to 1984 by George Orwell a lot. And I do enjoy a bit of George Orwell. I've only read 1984 and Animal Farm. And I read them both back when I was at school. I read 1984 voluntarily. I read Animal Farm for school. But I really enjoyed it. And so I've, I think this would be such a fascinating book as a young novelist discovers that her editor is in danger of being taken away by the memory police ah oh, i think it's gonna be so interesting so thank you so much to whoever got me this next parcel this video is gonna be so long guys because <laughs> we've got so many books to talk about <gasps> this is one of the books i wanted to get the most who's it from it's from Karis from the discord sending you all the love during this difficult time please take care of yourself and i hope you enjoy this book Karis. you picked an absolutely incredible book well i hope you did <laughs> you picked one i'm very excited about we have got middle of the night by riley sager this is riley sager's new release i have read every single riley sager that's in existence <laughs> I'm a very passionate Riley Sager. Well, here's the thing. Sometimes I love Riley Sager, sometimes I hate them, but he always does something. I've heard mixed things about this one. So far from people who have already read this, I have heard mixed things about this one. However, I'm very excited about it. This is his first male protagonist, which is, oh my God, how brave, Riley. How brave. <laughs> we are brave. We are strong. We conquered. We're following a guy and in 1994, him and his best friend fell asleep on in a tent on their lawn, but in the next morning he woke up and his friend was gone, and 30 years later he returns to his childhood home for answers. I'm really, oh, this could be one I read really soon. I'm really, 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 really excited for this one. This is one that will probably be nominated, actually, for now I think about it, for the Goodreads Choice Awards. I mean, Riley, unless, he, there's a few times Riley hasn't been nominated because his books were under the minimum average rating. But unless that happens, I'm pretty sure this will be nominated for that. So even if I don't read it before then, I will be reading it for that video, because I've said a few times now I'm gonna try and read the top 20. <gasps> I need to like get my shit together, my life together a little bit, but like if I can, I'm gonna try and read the top 20. Terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> okay, next book. We've got another little parcel. Is there a note? Oh, there's not a note! Again, please tell me if you got this for me. We have got... <gasps> yes, 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 yes! Whoever this is, thank you so much. We have got Three Act Tragedy by Agatha Christie, which is the next in the Par Rose series. Well, technically, the next I need to read is Murder on the Orient Express. I need to do a reread. This is the first Agatha Christie I ever read, one of the first Murder Mysteries I've ever read. So I've been meaning, I meant to do a reread of that in December. Never happened. <laughs> But I want to do a reread of that, and then my next book is Three Act Treasure Bags by Christie. I think I'm just going to reread that soon, because otherwise I'm like not going to have made progress in Pro Row this year, which is absolutely insanity. Guys, it's so hot. Oh my god, and I can't have the windows open because there's like work going on outside. My parents have aircon in their room, so I think I'm just going to periodically go cool down. There's going to be breaks. <laughs> in between segments. This one I think is death at a dinner party, which sounds really fun. And listen, you guys know, I just love making progress in my Pro series. I just like making progress. And so thank you so much for whoever got this to me. This is another one that if I had bought books off my wishlist, this has been right up there because I want to prioritize. You know, I can't make progress in the series if I don't own it. <laughs> so thank you so much, I'm so excited. Okay, oh, we have a note. This is from Elena. Hi Meg, I know things have been especially tough lately and I wanted to send you a book to brighten your day. Thanks for bringing joy to the world through YouTube and Patreon. You are the best of us. Oh my God, you guys are gonna make me cry. What is it? It's big. <gasps> oh shit. Okay, this is Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Farida Abike Iamede. This is the author of Ace of Spades, which I didn't laugh as much as everyone else did. Okay, we're just gonna move on from that. But I've heard really good things about this one. And it's a YA mystery, and I wanna read more YA diverse mysteries. And so I'm just giving her another go. I'm giving her another go. This is big, girl. This is 560 pages. Holy shit. She's huge, but she's so beautiful. She's a mammoth, of course. 
for a YA, that's kind of psychotic. Anyways, this is set at an academy. We've got the new girl at the academy. She certainly didn't imagine her roommate to go missing on the first night or for people to think she had something to do with it. And then a student is found dead. Dear God, the drama. I just was upset I didn't love Ace of Spades as much as I wanted to. However, I saw Glimmers. I saw Glimmers of Hope. It just felt a bit debut -y. And it was a debut. So like, you know. <laughs> So thank you so much. I'm really, really looking forward to this one and giving this author another go. And I've heard pretty good things about it, but it's long. I, when this parcel arrived, I was like, what could this be? Cause it's so thin. If I had to guess, I, I'm thinking of what's on my wish list. I think it must be Saga, right? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Who is this from? This is from Emma. Sorry to keep adding books to your TBR, but I love to be some kind of sequel Santa. Hope you're doing okay. Thank you so much, Emma. Emma also gave to me a few others that are later on in this in this video. We have got Saga Volume 3 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. I'm making my way through this series pretty slowly. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> making it through pretty sunny but there's a lot there's a lot and to be fair they usually read them very quickly um this is like a sci-fi i don't know how to sum this up really it's a sci-fi graphic novel series of a young family who the parents are from like opposing factions or opposing sides within a war and they're trying to survive and no they people want them to die because they shouldn't you know they don't want people to see that pe these people can, can love each other basically yeah i've really enjoyed the first two so thank you so much emma another series i'd love to make progress on. next book let's see firstly do we have a note we do who is this from oh my god <laughs> so you guys know we had the Discord Riddler, we've got the Discord Myself, we've got the Discord Elf. We now know who the Discord Elf is and the Discord Riddler. We do not know who the Discord Myself is. These are people who are anonymously sending each other books on the Discord. And we recently had the Upside Down Elf who like, I don't know if you can see, who have been sending messages. However, this message is a clue. <laughs> We now know, this has obviously been sent a while ago, last night we discovered who the Discord Upside Down Elf is and it is Brie, one of my mods, because this clue is because Pudding, Brie's cat always types <laughs> or like leaves messages of like long letters on the Discord, so that's a clue, so otherwise, but we figured out it was Brie yesterday, where we go? <gasps> Ooh, okay, we have got The Main Character by Jacqueline Goldis. This is the author of The Chateau, which came out last year, and some people didn't love, but I did really enjoy. And this one, oh! Being a bit saucy. Ooh. There's this author who like hires real people for her mystery thriller books. Uh, so she hires real people and interviews them and then fictionalizes them. And her latest main character, she sends on this lavish trip alongside the Italy's Mediterranean coast on the Orient Express. But when she boards the train, the main character, <laughs> she discovers that her brother, her best friend and her ex-fiance are all passengers. And I think murder starts occurring. So just like the setting, I, I do, I love a train setting. I think because Murder on the Orient Express is one of my first ever murder mysteries, it feels very nostalgic. It feels like, oh, it's just such a great contained setting. But also the setting of this alongside the Italy's, Italy coast is so like bougie and like, oh, I just love an atmosphere. I love, you guys know, like Lucy Foley does this very well, like a rich ass atmosphere for the rich ass people and it's going to go wrong. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. I, I think it's going to be a very meta murder mystery and um, yeah, I'm excited for the kind of throwback and acknowledgement to Murder on the Express. So thank you so much, Brie and Pudding. <laughs> Next book. This is from Cade. Thank you so much, Cade. We have got Sinister Spring by Agatha Christie. So this is a collection of short stories by Agatha Christie centered around spring. They've got one for each season. I have read Midwinter Murder. That's the only one I own or have read. I think they brought that one out quite a long time before they brought the rest of the seasons out. But thank you so much. We've got Sinister to spring. I love a good Agatha Christie short story. I'm really, really looking forward to this. I really enjoyed Mid Midwinter Murder. I'll probably save this for next spring when it's springtime and read it then with the blossoms coming out. But again, this is we've got a few more of these in the book haul, but I love these hardcover Agatha Christie editions and I want to collect them all because they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. So we've got some Hercule Poirot short stories. We've got Miss Marple. We've got Tommy and Tuppence and other short stories. Very exciting. Thank you so much, Cade. Oh, wait, we've got another one. Is this also from Cade? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it's lucky that I opened them in this order because the note says, yup, another one. 
We have got, oh, I love this cover. We have got Autumn Chills by Expressly. Look at that. I just love these additions so, so much. Oh, secluded cottages, eerie manners, and ghostly hauntings abound in this collection of 12 supernatural mysteries and murderous plots. Oh, I'm so excited. Kate, thank you so much. I love this edition. Well, this will be read in autumn. I'm gonna read this this autumn. That is so 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 exciting i think we've got two parcels left i feel like such a lucky gal oh who is this from oh another <laughs> hey fancy another one I remember them slightly in the wrong one. Also from Cade, I'm really sorry things have been so difficult these last few months sending you the best vibes energy and beautiful editions Cade you just know what i need <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy about how many more of these editions I'm collecting. I just love them. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is Five Little Pigs by Agatha Christie. This is a little ways into the Poirot series. So again, like some of these ones I'm probably not gonna read for a while because I'm currently on Three Act Tragedy and we've got maybe like 10, 12 between um, that and this, but I just wanna own them all. <laughs> this is like my one thing I collect is these editions of Agatha Christie. The quote on the back says, that was my task, to put myself in reverse gear, to go back through the years and discover what happened. Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know the plot. I don't know the plot of this one. I don't know the plot. Oh, it looks like it might be take place partially. Oh, it opens with counsel for the defense and counsel for the prosecution. Okay, it looks a little bit like courty, which I do like a good court based mystery. So thank you so much, Cade. Okay, one last book and then I'm gonna go take an aircon break before the next section. It feels like there might be two books in here. From Catherine, I'm so sorry to hear you're having a tough time over the past couple months, so I decided to send you these. One is from your list and one is a light sci-fi I thought you'd like. And the cats have a purpose. Oh my goodness, okay. So the one on my wish list is She Left by Stacey Gray. This is a new release thriller. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's a girl who walked out of a house party um, she was mad at her friends. Within the next hour, all five of those friends would be dead. So there was a massacre at the party and she was the one who left and survived. 20 years later, 10 people with connections to the crime have been invited to a remote cliffside house by a journalist looking to do a story on the murders. The group quickly learns the event is not what it seems as the storm closes in and the guests begin to die. Oh my God. Oh yes, locked room murder mystery. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think, is this a debut? I think it may be a debut because I don't remember hearing of any books by Stacey Gray. I could be wrong, but I'm really, really looking forward. It sounds like a kind of classic structure of a book I would enjoy. And then the surprise book that Catherine sent me is On Earth As It Is On Television. There's a little cat. <laughs> this looks like such a cute cover. I've never heard of this book. The spaceships visit Earth, but they only stick around for a couple of days before moving on. Will they return to destroy us? Or was our B-list Earth not good enough to conquer? Embracing the absurdity that is life in the 21st century, it is a rollicking, gender-bending tale of first contact that asks and answers what is so great about being human anyway. Oh, fascinating. This sounds like something that's right up my street. So thank Thank you so much, Catherine. I'm really, really intrigued by this one. So thank you so much. I'm gonna take a break to cool down <laughs> and then we will get into the biggest category. I've split into categories, but the big, big, big category we have is 2024 releases. We have a lot of 2024 releases I've got my hands on that we need to chat about. Okay, let's get into the 2024 releases that we have. Oh my God, we have a lot. <laughs> I've got to try and speak quicker about books than I usually do. So first we have The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I have heard so many good things about this one. It is a sci-fi fantasy murder mystery pitched as part Sherlock Holmes murder mystery, part through the looking glass. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So there's like an Imperial officer who dies, killed when a tree spontaneously erupted from his body. And then we're following the investigators who are investigating it. I have heard really, really good things about this one. Robert Jackson Bennett wrote, I believe Foundry Side, is that what the book's called? Which was a really hyped fantasy release a little while ago. And then, yeah, I've just heard really, really good things about this one. And I love anything that mixes genres. I love combinations of fantasy and mystery. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. Really positive that I'm gonna like it. Next we have The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. This is the sequel to The Maid by Nita Prose, which I did really enjoy. It won the Goodreads Choice Awards, not last year, the year before, for Mystery Thriller. So it was a really, really big release. And then I haven't really heard anyone speak about this one. God, what's going on, guys? Where's the cheers, man? Oh, I love, I always love the inside cover of these ones. I think it's really beautiful. And then this one, there's a famous mystery writer who dies in the hotel and suspicion swirls and Molly the Maid has to solve it. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. Then we have one that's 
course for an upcoming video, but I'm actually really excited to read it. It is The House of Hidden Meanings by RuPaul. So this is RuPaul's memoir. And you know, as anyone who's watched Drag Race, I'm sure it'll be about, it'll be very like inward looking. It'll be about like the inner saboteur and like, you know, RuPaul can get quite existential <laughs> sometimes. So I'm excited to see what it's like. I've heard mixed things, but I'm really interested in hearing about his life and the stuff that he went through and his journey. And I just read a book recently actually, which you'll see in this weekend's vlog that kind of is along a similar topic a little bit, some similar crossover that's made me even more interested in hearing certain events from his perspective. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what I think of this one. Then we have The Gathering by CJ Tudor. I always see, I always say CJ Tudor is like a guaranteed four star for me. <laughs> I think I've given all of her books pretty much a four star. This one, she started veering into like horror thriller mystery hybrids, like books that kind of sit at the center of that crossover, which is very interesting. So this one is set in a small Alaskan town. A boy is found with his throat ripped out and the blood drained from his body. The brutality of the murder chillingly echoes a killing from 25 years ago. And we're following the out-of-state detectives who's brought on to kind of investigate the case. Things don't add up, there's snow, it's dark. I'm really, really looking forward to this one. I think this has been some of the most like really widely liked ones that she's published in a while. So I just love the setting, like a small Alaskan town where there's only like 600 people living. It's such a small, tight-knit community with all these secrets. I think it's gonna be wonderful. I, I cannot, oh, oh guys, I love reading. <laughs> I've been really struggling with reading. I have only finished two books so far in July. It's not even funny. And just talking about all these books is making me so, so excited to read. <laughs> Then we have The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson, another one I am going to be reading soon. It's about a woman who went missing 16 years ago, is gone presumed dead, there's a true crime documentary being made about her, and then she turns up. Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? Where have you bloody been? Presumably, maybe. I don't know, is it actually to be her? I don't know, I don't know. She has, we're following also her, her 18 year old daughter who's kind of lived in the shadow of her mother's disappearance all of her life. But I'm really looking forward to this one. Listen, I love obviously the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I did not love Five Survive. So that's what makes me a little bit nervous for this one. And I've heard, you know, some middle of the road things I would say. So I'm nervous, but like, I don't want The Good Girls Guide to Murder to be like a one, I don't wanna say one hit wonder because it's the whole series is great for me. It makes no sense to me how I loved that whole series so much. And then I struggled with Five Survive so much. So if I don't enjoy this, it's gonna be like a mind fuck. Like I don't understand what I'm supposed to think of Holly Jackson. I don't understand like <laughs> what I'm supposed to believe. Am I gonna enjoy her books? Am I not gonna enjoy her books? So, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to reading it and just seeing what I think of it regardless. Oh, then one that I had to buy, I bought this on Vinted, which I never do, this edition of this book, but I loved it. This is by, this is from Evernight, which I think is an Illumicrate um, special edition new box. They have, a, I think, horror releases. I wouldn't call this horror. It's being marketed as horror. Anyways, it is Murder Road by Simone St. James. I love this edition. I love it. I never buy special editions, but look at this. How cool is this? And then it's like a map on the hardcover. Oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. I love this edition so much. The obsession that I got with it was was borderline unhealthy. I don't know <laughs> yeah. how I'm gonna integrate in society after this. <laughs> but yeah, I've really enjoyed a lot of Simone St. James that I've read. And in this one, we're following a couple who take the wrong turn at night and they see a woman up ahead who's in trouble. And they pick her up, but I think she passes away and she is not the only person to have died on this stretch of road. So it's a mystery about this road. I love. I love, 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 love this edition. Like, isn't it so cool with like these pictures? <gasps> I love it. I love this edition. So I'm so glad I got my hands on it and so excited to see what I think of this because I have enjoyed a lot of the Simone St. James I've read. I enjoyed the Book of Cold Cases. I loved The Broken Girls. So definitely an author I want to get more into, but I just love, I love this edition so much. <laughs> then we have An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is a dark academia, but also vampire-y because maybe it's Camilla and a bit sapphic. It's a dark academia tale of blood secrets and insatiable hunger. This is by the author of A Dowry of Blood. I'm excited to read maybe a bit more of like a traditional book, a bit more, it seems like a bit more of a traditional novel. A Dowry of Blood very interesting because it's short and it's told through these letters and it's very experimental. But I'm excited to see what I think of this one. I'm gonna try and get through these quicker. Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. Next I have a book that I've spoken so much about and I'm terrified to read. I keep putting it off. I may not read it until it's probably nominated for Goodreads Mystery Thriller. <laughs> at the end of the year, and it is The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. 
probably my most hyped release of the year. Probably my most hyped release of the year, but I just keep putting it off. I keep putting it off. This, I feel like I've given the synopsis so many times. The world has been destroyed by this fog. There's this small island with a small group of inhabitants who are saved by like this barrier from the fog. There's a scientist who is murdered on the island and it triggers a, rele a lowering of the barriers to let the fog in. They've only got like, I think like 127 hours or something like that. They've got like 107 hours before the smug will smother the island. Also, the security system on the island has wiped everyone's memory of the incident so someone on the island is a murderer and doesn't even know it. <sighs> I've gotten even hotter just talking about that back. <laughs> So I'm so excited for it. The synopsis is everything I've ever wanted in a book. Like it sounds incredible. It sounds absolutely amazing. It sounds like everything I've ever wanted. It sounds, I, I, I can't convey to you how high my expectations of this book are. So we'll see whether they are met or not, but I am just really, 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 really looking forward to this one. I cannot wait to pick it up, but I'm so nervous. Cause like that's like such a high bar for it to try and reach. Then we've got a book I just got for a video. I'm just gonna hold it up. It's a romanticy. It's called A Fate Inked in Blood by Daniel A. Jensen. It's Norse mythology inspired romanticy. I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm very nervous about what I'm gonna think of this. I'm very nervous. Mm. Mm. I'm very nervous. Moving on. <laughs> Then we have The Ministry of Time, which is a very interesting book. It's set in civil service here in the UK, and one civil servant is offered a lucrative job in a new government ministry about time travel. And she has to like work with someone who's time traveled from the 18, from 1847. It's maybe like a love story. I, I think it's gonna be so fascinating. I've heard wonderful things about it. Like I said a couple of times, this has been a really big release in the UK this year. And I'm just fascinated about the, the idea of this. I love a time travel book. It's got so many, so much praise at the beginning. The first couple pages, Jesus, the first five pages are all just praise for this book. My goodness. <laughs> but this is a debut as well. So I'm very interested. Oh, it sounds fascinating. It sounds absolutely fascinating. So cannot wait to get to that one soon. Then we have Private Rights by Julia Armfield. I'm really looking forward to this one, having read Our Wives Under the Sea. And it's about sisters who their father dies. It's a bit of a King Lear retelling. Their father dies and he was a famous architect and they find themselves uncertain of how to grieve his passing. As the sisters come together, something sinister is unfolding, something related to her mother's long ago disappearance. It's very interesting. It's a bit of a vague synopsis, but I've heard really good things from people who have my discord who have loved Julia Armfield's previous stuff. So yeah, looking forward to see what I think of this one. A sonorous portrayal of the family as a drowned world. A narrative voice so crystal cut with dry affecting truths that every page guillotines you with its wisdom. Dear God, that's quite the testimonial. <laughs> then we have, oh, I just got makeup on it. I just got makeup on this very, very white cover. It's okay, I'm gonna color it in, so. Oh dear, I've got makeup on my hands. Okay, then we have The Examiner by Janice Hallett. This I've spoken about again 10,000 times. We're following six students, one murder on this art course. There's this art course and the examiner is examining the work but thinks there was another student on the course who was murdered and people have covered it up and they're trying to investigate what happened. Janice Hallett for me is an absolute icon of modern murder mystery. Try not to say mother challenge failed. What she is doing with the mixed media, but even just her plots, her setups are so ingenious, are so interesting. I I, I mean, I've spoken about this 10,000 times. I'm so, so looking forward to picking this up. So looking forward to picking it up. I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. And we've got, again, like in the mysterious case of Appleton Angels, we've got a mix of mixed media. Her previous books were like one type of mixed media, whereas this one is like a, a, a mix of it. And I'm just really... Oh, I can't even look at it. It's such an exciting premise. Next we have Night Watching by Tracy Sierra. This is a really exciting thriller that's been really hyped up. And it's about a woman who's looking after her sons and there's someone in the house. She tucks into bed and there's someone in the house. I think it's like her hiding from this person. I think, I assume we're having like flashbacks to like past things and piecing something together. But I believe the book is her trying to hide and survive from this person who's in her house whilst also trying to keep her kids alive. So I've heard that it's very like, it's your quintessential thriller thriller. I'm feeling like it's gonna make me feel like no exit makes me feel, I mean, well, yeah, that's quite high expectations. It's a similar vein to how no exit made me feel. I'm not necessarily on the same level because no exit is, you know, <laughs> unbeatable. 
But, um, you know, I want like this tense, unputdownable thriller from this. Next we have The Women by Kristen Hanna, another one I've spoken a little about lately, so I won't touch on it too much, but this is set in the Vietnam War and it's the story of women who go to war or women during war and the people that are left behind and the stories that are left behind, the stories that are untold. And I'm excited to get into my next Kristen Hanna. Let's talk about these two together because they were two of my most hyped romances coming out this year. We have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez and Not in Love by Ellie. Hazelwood. This is Ali, right? It's Ali, but the synopsis of this isn't as exciting. I believe it's like fuck buddies to romance is the, is the pipeline we've got going on here. It's STEM again, but it's, I mean, it's Ali. You don't need to tell me the plot. I, you don't need to tell you the plot. I don't really know what the plot is. <laughs> so like they're having a secret affair and they're working in science and they can't catch feelings, but then they do. This synopsis is much more exciting by Abby Jimenez. It's about these two people who believe they have a curse that whoever they date when they break up they go on to find their soulmate so they decide to date each other to cancel it out i am so excited i loved part of your world and yours truly by abba jimenez definitely become probably i would say my second favorite romance author to ali hazelwood so i'm so excited for this one so excited then we have the house that horror built by christina henry one that i've heard mixed things about it's about a single mum who has always loved horror movies she's offered a job to clean at the house of this uh world renowned horror director and things start going wrong in the house. Please let me know what you thought of this one because I've heard some mixed things. Then we have A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson. This one is in the Henry and Lily series but I don't know, I just want to know can I read it before I read number two because I don't own number two. But it's about a woman who believes, starts to believe that her husband is a serial killer. She starts I think to track like work trips he's gone on and murders that happen there at the same time and starts thinking Oh my god, my husband's a murderer. Oh dear. <laughs> That's suspicious. That's weird. And I really did enjoy the first in the series, The Kind Worth Killing. So yeah, really excited to get this one. We have an arc I got sent that I can't remember a ton about. It's All the Hidden Monsters by Amy Jordan. This is a YA crime fantasy. So again, kind of blurring the mystery and fantasy genres, which I do really enjoy. A grisly murder, a detective warlock with a dangerous past, a girl out of her debt. So I think it's a girl... Yeah, okay, she's a girl and a werewolf and she can move between the worlds. This has had, I've had a look at some of the early ratings of this and it has had really good re ratings. So I am intrigued to pick this one up. Then we have an arc I got sent unsolicited and it is Casey and Kristen The Pairing, which is a very hyped book. I think I was sent it by mistake if I'm entirely honest with you. But yeah, it's Casey and Kristen's new one and it's two bisexual exes who decide to have a hookup competition in Europe. So let me know. I mean, I'm going to give it a go. I'm intrigued. I just didn't love Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey and Kristen like everyone else did. So I, I'm intrigued to see what I think of this one. Sorry, I'm trying to blur, I'm trying to get through these quickly because otherwise this video is going to be two hours long if I speak about each book at my normal speed, which I know is like 10 light years. And then we have The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins, which I've heard so many people when I heard this were like, oh yeah, The Heiress is, is good shit. <laughs> it's good shit. There's an heiress who dies, the son wants nothing to do with her money, but then 10 years later the uncle dies and he gets, and him and his wife get pulled back into this house and the house tightens their grip on them. Rachel Hawkins thrillers are usually balls to the wall intense like balls to the wall like we're going for it you know what I mean we're gonna go for it we're gonna we're gonna go for it <laughs> And I appreciate that. So I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. So the other categories aren't necessarily even categories, but I did split them up anyway. So I do have a few sequels to show you. Firstly, we have two more of my favorite Agatha Christie editions. I very kindly got sent. We have Halloween Party, which is what the recent Proro movie A Haunting in Venice is based off of, but it's very much changed, I believe. Like it's very different. And we have Dead Man's Folly. I love this one. It's so like spring, summertime, bunting, village fun, but obviously someone's gonna die. So um, yeah, thank you so much for both of these editions. I love them. Then I have the third in the, uh, Sinclair Mysteries by Catherine Woodfine. These are a middle grade mystery series that I really enjoy. This one is The Painted Dragon. This is definitely a series I would like to finish this year. I've only got this one and The Midnight Peacock Trade and I would really like to just finish it off. And this one, a priceless painting is stolen. Our dauntless heroines Sophie and Lil find themselves faced with forgery, trickery and deceit on all sides. It's really fun. They work at like this department store. It's set, I would say like in Edwardian times and it's just very, a great atmosphere, a great kind of setting. It's very dramatic. It's very 
over the top. It's really, really fun. Then we have, oh, I'm so excited. I need to read this soon. I don't know when I'm going to get to read this, but I'm so excited. We have an act of foul play by T.E. Kinsey. This is the next in Lady Hardcastle series. And a play is being put on in the town. And the act two opens with a body on stage, a real one. One of the cast has been brutally murdered during the interval. Oh, I'm so excited. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. If you know, you know. If you don't know, like, I honestly feel bad for you. Like, I think this is gonna be so much fun. I love this series. I mean, I'm like so far into it at this point. And um, I just love Lady Hardcastle and Flay's relationship. I adore them. I love them more than life itself. <laughs> I love them so much. I This is one of the books I am most excited to read. And it's one that you guys probably don't really care about because like, it's so deep in a series <laughs> that maybe a lot of you aren't interested in. Although you should be. You should be. If you're interested in it, read the audiobooks. But um. I am so excited. I love the series so much. <laughs> and then we have Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun by El Cosimano. This is, I think is the third in the Finley Donovan series. And can I tell you the plot of this one or is it a spoiler for the other one? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I can't really tell you the plot. This, she's gotten caught up in mobs and cops and you know, it's about a single mom Finley who's also an author, but she gets caught up in the world of killing and assassins and death and murder and it's just really fun i didn't love the second one as much i lo i loved the first one i gave it five stars i absolutely loved it i had issues with the second one so i'm intrigued to see what i think of this one then we have a category i'm just calling other books although we do have a category after this which will make sense in a second but these books didn't fit into any particular category <laughs> Firstly, we have one that I'm so excited that I finally got my hands on, and it is The Want and Future Sex by Eleanor Janega. This is a release, I think, from last year, but I never got my hands on it because it's pretty expensive, but I had a voucher, and this is what I decided to get because I'm so intrigued by it. So this is nonfiction, all about women during the medieval period, and it's kind of looking at how the idea of what a woman should be during this time period has affected the present day, and also looking at, like, what our idea of a woman at that time is. There's certain like women like Eleanor of Aquitaine who like lived very like big in the public eye lives but is that how the average woman lived and I, I think it's gonna be fascinating I think this sounds like a fascinating non-fiction but I mean I love women <laughs> I love non-fiction about women <laughs> women. So I'm just fascinated by this. I've wanted it for so long and I'm so excited that I finally have my hands in it because I think it's going to be great. One of my patrons, Heidi, very kindly sent me two of her favourite books. We've got a cat book, <laughs> Love Saves the Day, which is a very heartwarming book about a cat. I can't read it yet. I can't I can't read it yet, but I I feel very lucky to own it because look at that cat, look, look at that little cat face. Uh, and then we have The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield, which is a historical mystery. We've got a house. It was once the imposing home of the March family, but it now conceals a chilling secret whose impact still resonates. I, I've heard really good things. Actually, when I hold this, a lot of you commented that you really enjoyed it. Then we have The Push by Asher Drain. This is a really popular thriller that came out a couple years ago. I think it's about a woman who starts hating her daughter or thinking her daughter's evil. And I'm intrigued to see what I think about it. It's Whenever I read like a book like Gone Girl or like this, like really genre defining thrillers or mysteries, you know, I, I would say like The Guest List is a very genre defining mystery as well in terms of what sets the trends for years to come. I'm really intrigued to see what I think of this. This is actually on TBR Cluedo, so I do need to read this at some point this year. <laughs> then we have An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I'm actually gonna be reading this in the next couple months for a video that I'm working on that I'm really excited for. And this is another book that I've wanted pretty much since it came out. When did this come out? 2019 I want to say? Maybe even 2018? 2018. It was first published in Great Britain in 2019. That's why I was getting the dates mixed up. But it's about this girl who stumbles across this giant sculpture and films it for YouTube and it goes viral. And it turns out it's like aliens, I think, and they've gone in like multiple cities and other worlds. It's a story of like internet virality and, and fame, but also this kind of like sci-fi element. I'm really intrigued. I've never read anything from Hank Green, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what I think of that one. Then we have another book that I picked up. I think at the same time I picked up The Once of Future Sex with a voucher, because I wanted it for so long. And it is The McMaster's Guide to Homicide, Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes. It's about these people who go to like train as killers or delete it they call them and they go to this school and they have to perfect the art of murder they have to plan the perfect murder I'm so excited I think this is like I love anything that twists a genre I tw I've wanted to read this for so long I've wanted to read this for so long I'm so excited to see what I think about it the font in this is absolutely diabolically tiny though I don't know if you can tell how tiny that is but it's crazy 
it's crazy out here. But um, yeah, you know, as someone who loves the murder mystery genre, I love books. This is so deep. This is so deep in the culture. <laughs> this is so deep in like, oh, I love anything that plays on the genre. So I cannot wait for this one. And then finally, we have The Murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. This is another Jane Austen murder mystery retelling. <laughs> I'm really, really excited for this one. Mr. Wickham is murdered. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. Womp. We all care. No, we don't. No, we don't. Clap if you care. <laughs> clap, if you, clap if you care. I really enjoyed reading Pride and Premeditation. I do need to continue on with that series, but this is another Jane Austen murder mystery series that is very highly revered. So looking forward to diving into it. And then the final category of books are just ones I've already read, <laughs> that I've hauled during this period and already read. So I'm just gonna show you them and tell you what rate I gave them because I've spoken about them loads already. And I will, if you want, I'll leave all the videos where these are read in the description. So we have How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin, which I gave four stars. The Warm Hands of Ghost by Catherine Arden, which I gave five stars, I loved it. Miss Sosten Investigates by Jessica Ball, which I gave four stars. Out There Screaming by Jordan Peele, which I gave three stars. Miss Lane and Parts Half Known by Shona McGuire, which I gave four stars. Butter by Osaka Yuzuki, which I gave two stars. And then you'll see this, I've shown this already actually. When did I show this? Oh, I showed it in the last video. <laughs> And I'm showing it my next video, me actually unboxing it because it's been that long. But um, my most, one of my most now prized bookish possessions is this edition of Pride and Prejudice, which I got gifted. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love it so much. I think it's so gorgeous. Like it's satin cover, even the detail of this not being straight. The illustrations on the inside are like beyond stunning. I love it. I think this is going to be a prize edition. I cannot wait to reread the book. Oh, I love them. I cannot wait to reread the book with this edition. I love it so much. So thank you so much. This was gifted to me by Carrie. You'll see me open it in this weekend's vlog. And I love it. I love it so much. Okay, everyone, that brings to close one of my biggest book hauls ever. I think this video is still going to be very long and I even tried to edit myself. Like, I don't know if you can tell <laughs> for some of those books, I could have spoken about them a lot more, but I was like, listen, the girlies <laughs> they need me to get through this video. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to anyone who gifted me those books. So I feel like such a lucky girl. I truly feel so loved and blessed and lucky and oh it was so so kind of you so let me know what you thought of any of these books particularly the ones I haven't read which ones do you want me to get to first which ones are you excited to see me read I'd love to know your opinions on any of these books or which ones you didn't enjoy <laughs> fine as well um but yeah thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys soon in another video bye